Oh yeah, it's 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 a dog walk. You're right. Good evening, everyone. We start this first meeting for Data 650, and this is going to be a quick uh, course overview and introduction to the topic of the first two weeks. So, uh, your host today is myself, Elena Gorcheva. I'm going to teach uh, one of the two sections in Data 650. Uh, plus, I'm the program director for the Master of Science in Data Analytics. Uh, some of you already have here. So my uh, main duty, in addition to teach from time to time, is to overview the curricula, make sure it's up to the, up to the need of the industry with quality, consistency, and updating constantly. This is very um, a concise overview, uh, overview. Uh, with me today, uh, other courses, Professor Ozan Oskan, he is teaching the other Data 650 section, and also Elena Batinskaya and Linish Dave, which both are TA respectively for one and the other section. So I will give the word to each of them to present themselves briefly, and then we will continue. Ozan? Hello everyone, this is Ozan. Uh, I have been teaching at, uh, uh, like since uh, 2016. I have, I have taught so far uh, 610, 620, 640, and uh, the last couple of years I have been teaching uh, 650. Uh, it's gonna be, I'm sure, another great semester for everyone. Uh, what else I can say? I work in the IT industry right now and I hope we're going to have a great semester together. Yes, Elena. So hello, everybody. And the most of you already, most of you already have met me uh, from, oops, from from Data 610 or from Data 630. Uh, I've been at your, with your MUC for about 11 and a half years. And uh, I hope we have a great semester, Linesh. Hello. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Alinesh Dave, and I'm going to be the DOTA TA for the class section in a 1941. Um, uh, there's a few, uh, few things about me. I'm being, uh, I've been part of IT for you know, more than 25 years, and uh, most of it has been in the telecom industry and in, in software development. I'm also the, you know, from the first batch of students from UMUCs, which is now UMGC. Um, so, um, from UMGC's Master's in Data Analytics program, and um, it's exactly the same program that I passed out, um, you know, way back in early 2016. So, uh, which means not too long ago, I was also a student of this course. Um, and my current role in, in, the, um, in the place that I work includes, uh, you know, leading data and analytics um, initiative for my organization. Um, so we're all very excited uh, to be uh, part of this semester, working with you. Um, what you'll also hear from me and, and from, uh, from this faculty is um, about the Kaggle competition um, that will be kind of hosted just for this class, just for this semester. Um, you get all the information and, and everything, um, but we'll kind of wait for a couple of weeks to go, right? Let's get, let's, have your feet wet into this course, you know, get, uh, get going with your assignment one, and then we'll kind of slowly introduce, introduce that. Uh, but it will be very exciting. Um, so, you know, um, and now that you are part of the, you know, course that is going to be like a precursor to your, you know, final course. So um, hopefully you, you'll enjoy the competition, enjoy doing something on your own um, completely. Um, so, Anyway, once again, um, looking forward to working with you all. Okay, good luck. Okay. Um, so the today agenda um, is uh, introduction to the course. We are going to do outline uh, of the topic of the course and some introdu introduction to the first two weeks, which is actually the introduction to the topic of big data. Uh, we are going to talk also about administrative stuff about the course grading, miscellaneous issue, week one activity, and of course, since this is simultaneous session, 
you will have the opportunity to ask a question and they will be answered right here. You will, of course, have all the information regarding your question. So before proceeding um, forward, I would like uh, to tell you that our two TA are a man, uh, Linus mentioned this, he is graduate of the program. Elena also is graduate of UMUC uh, from a sister program, the database. So both were already in your shoes, student in online uh, class and working full-time job. So in them, you have just your reflection and they have been very helpful. Um, so, with no more, I'm proceeding to the topic of this course and of course we have to understand uh, clearly what is big data and although you have care about this all the time in the program, in your professional uh, life, in everyday life, this is a term which has been, um, is not clear because it's used in many different um, direction and has no clear definition in general because what uh, what stands behind what is big data is not that the data is big in size in volume of course yeah if we talk about the volume of data is huge but it's not just this the ter the uh, what we understand by big data is much more than the volume of data is the technology related to deal with this data. So actually when we talk about big data, we, you immediately um, connect this 10 years ago with Hadoop. Why? Because this was the technology which helped it to handle the huge amount of data because you first have to uh, have the uh, data stored and accessible. So that's why the first technology related with the size of the data was Hadoop. In addition to this, when we talk about big data, you know about all the definition about the four V is volume, is speed, is variety, velocity, so on and on and on. I want to uh, concisely point out that this is not enough. Sometimes when we talk about uh, big data, they are very misleading um, article and use of the term. In general, we refer to big data when we are not able with the existing technology of storage, capture, sharing, analytic visualization, to deal easy with this data is some difficulty and we need special technology. That's why when we talk about big data, we relate with, with the data architecture needed for this, the tool needed for this, the methods needed for this, and everything is new in order to be able to deal with, um, uh, with big data. And of course, if we talk about the architecture, the storage, the analytical method, the tools, we're talking about multiple skills which you as a future professional in data science must have. And these multiple skills, part of them, we are going to try to uh, build in this course with a specific project. So I have several uh, slides in this presentation, which are just to remind you what you, uh, what you have heard about the uh, big data and just to have this in more systematic view. I'm not gonna spend time talking about, uh, about this, just you can go and reflect and read more if you need about the structure, about the processing complexity, and about the complexity of big data. I very much like this uh, slide, that's why I put it here, which historically show you uh, not just the size of the data you have in the, top, uh, in the top, growing from terabyte, petabyte, exabyte, and so on and on and on, 
when you see the different uh, company using and trying to find a solution in order to deal with this data, you understand that we are talking about not just about structure, we are talking about text, we are talking about images because what is in YouTube, what is in Facebook, what is in um, all Twitter is not just uh, simple uh, structured data, it's a free text, the text we are talking about are images. And this is actually the most difficult part. So when we start talking about big data, we have to relate with uh, this with the technology, which will permit us to get insight for this data. And you know that as a data analyst, data scientist, your main role is to find insight of data. And mostly today, everything has evolved, not in the volume. The volume is already done stuff and keep growing. That is not the major difficulty. The major difficulty is to make sense of the free text, of the, of the sentiment inside of this text, to make sense of images, of video, and do intelligent stuff. That is what company want today. And I want uh, to uh, make sure that you understand this. It's not, just, uh, it's not just to keep saying, yeah, text, text. If you go to the UMGC Career Center, which I um, assume by now most of you have account there, these people are helping you. If you are looking uh, for a job to prepare resume, going to open house with many employers, mostly online, all these people today are using the advancement of technology of big data. They are using tool to read a resume, software tool to read resume and make recommendation, which is the today uh, state of the art in where we are in understanding text. They are preparing you for, um, for interview uh, in a way uh, you are giving question, you are answering and you get recommendation and again by software. So I want to talk about this because it's very important that you understand the way everything evolved, this naturally blend with what we are talking today about AI. It's just a natural blend. blend. There is no, uh, uh, no other course in AI you are going to find in this program. The topic of AI, are blending, are evolving for big data, and you will find them in this course. So practically, everything in this field has evolved by the necessity of the customer of the industry and the capability of the uh, uh, capability of the technology to respond to these needs. So I'm talking, and you see there is other things showing in the in the slide, the slides are mostly, uh, let's say, um, organization of what you have to um, review for what you have uh, learned about big data. In this slide, it's nothing which you don't know about structured, semi-structured, quasi-structured, and unstructured data. I just want to point to this and that you understand that the big chunk of data is in the bottom of the pyramid and these are the data which today all the businesses are interested and in. mostly we are going to work with this in the bottom in the pyramid. Of course we have, you don't have to uh, forget that uh, they are fortunately more easier stuff like structured data which can, we can put in uh, table in, uh, in transactional uh, databases. Also, semi-structured, which somehow you can, uh, there is some pattern and you can more easily uh, get some inside or quasi-structured. What I want from this slide is that every time you will have to solve a problem and look to the data you have at hand, Try to make sure what type of data you have. You don't have to go 
if you have a simple HTML uh, file to go to the method which are for free text and images and use deep learning for them. Uh, so that's why I'm pointing if your problem uh, permits some, uh, let's say, uh, some schema, you can have more simple processing and you should be doing, shouldn't be doing the processing which pertain to what is free text, images, video. So try to make sense and put your data more or less in this diagram and then look for methods which are more appropriate. Again, we mostly are going to focus in the bottom part because in the top when there is a, a schema or some, uh, some uh, type of structure, uh, you already have worked with this type of data and there is a lot uh, um, you can find existing. We are going to work in what is more difficult and more um, necessary today in industry. So uh, having said that, I also put a slide. You can, uh, you can easier look here and see where more or less your data for the problem fit and look for appropriate method. Again, I want to stress that in this class, we are going to work where the most value of the data is, where the most interest is in unstructured textual data and images. Just to tell you how difficult the processing is and why we are going to focus heavily on this is just to reflect on what is the natural language and the way the natural language processing has evolved and what is the state of the art today, what we can do with natural language processing today and get value and uh, have the business with competitive advantage uh, compared to the other businesses in the same field. Uh, why so difficult? I have, um, this is a, a, a slide borrowed by IBM Watson, and you can see this was one of the first, let's say around 10 years ago. So um, one of the first, um, let's say industrial showing of the, power, uh, of the powerful use of the natural language processing uh, for one very specific application, which was um, uh, the game of Jopper. So the thing here is, it doesn't matter what the specific application is. If you need to understand to make sense of the natural language, you need the first phase of processing and then understanding. And why is difficult? Because if you read the statement I have here with bullet point, you understand how difficult it is to interpret, even for us, the human, the natural language. For instance, how you can easily understand that um, we are filling the form, uh, filling the form out. Okay, why we do fill the form by filling it out? You, it's like you fill in a form by filling it out. So that is the way we express the idea in natural language. And if we want that a computer uh, algorithm understand the language, we have to make sense of all these not very strict rule we have in the natural language. It's not the same to have the structured data in two columns, like uh, down I have person and organization, and put uh, three person in, in the left and three organization, and then uh, structurally we can say that uh, Welch run this GA, General Electric. So if we have, instead of this structured table, a sentence which I have to the right, which is if leadership is an art, then surely Jack Well has proven himself a master painter during his tenure at GA. So you understand the way we express uh, 
in natural language we use different uh, type of uh, uh, of expression which is not easy for a machine to understand so part of the thing advancement of this direction we are going to use them to apply to solve something useful we are not going to work here in what is the base of the natural language processing itself we are going to use the advancement in this direction which are available in different packages in python in r and we are going to do some cool stuff in also with big data with hadoop and spark so this is uh, to continue talking why we are going to talk about ai a lot in this course the natural involvement of big data has given the opportunity to the machine learning to build more reliable more um, uh, let's say uh, better models uh, because if you uh, train the model with um, a huge amount of data you would have uh, and more uh, let's say not just the size of the data that is uh, is huge but with big data you have the appropriate data for the machine learning algorithm to build the model for a specific application so this has evolved as a benefits for machine learning machine learning has reached a point in which is very uh, productive and then many businesses can rely in the model build the machine learning and the machine learning has evolved thanks to big thanks to big data on the other hand machine learning always has been let's say the the central part of the artificial intelligence and we are talking about in this scheme i'm talking about the classical artificial intelligence where um, big data and machine learning were portion of it and inter um, intersect the contemporary ai for which uh, uh, we are going to focus not in the idea uh in the 50s to build a um, classical artificial intelligence algorithm which can substitute human the contemporary ai is not about substituting human it's about augmenting enhancing human capability is not to substitute is not to have all the capability of the human another very important contemporary ai characteristic is is not general artificial intelligence is for the uh, for defined application for defined domain for instance is for understanding uh, let's say images of type of plant let's put it this way or is for understanding uh, geography of this is uh, quite broad um, is for understanding x-ray images for medical but not all of them so we're talking about contemporary ai which is built for a certain domain problem is not general ai so whatever package or software you are going to explore keep this in mind it doesn't serve the general purpose you cannot expect that the model is trained with data to recognize flower and is going to recognize mice uh, or animals you know so that is the limitation but that is what we're standing today with the contemporary ai is very defined for a certain domain because we use the data to train machine learning and to build model for certain type of data for, uh, which pertain to certain application so we're talking about specific not general um, artificial intelligence so that's why i want you to understand why we are going to talk a lot about this because everything evolved 
10 years ago, you understand when we were talking about big data Hadoop, yes, Hadoop, that was the beginning to make sure that we can store and access uh, different type of data, structure it, unstructure it, and in, in big volume. So that was the beginning. Thing has evolved with big data, which uh, give uh, the possibility with big data and machine learning to go to what is contemporary AI. And that's why this course has evolved in what is the application of the contemporary AI. Of course, we are going to start with the classic, classic Hadoop. We are not going to avoid this. But since Hadoop resolved the problem of big data to today, in 10 years, technology has evolved so much that the field of big data has evolved to a contemporary AI. And this is what we are going to focus a lot in this class. So there is also confusion. Uh, where is data science? Where is uh, deep learning? Where is machine learning? Where is artificial intelligence? So I try to present this in more organized way. And we have overarching data science, which use machine learning algorithm. Deep learning are subset of the machine le um, learning uh, of machine learning, a very specific uh, method uh, to, for uh, machine learning, which is deep learning. And uh, machine learning is a subset, is like, is like the core, the heart, the heart of the artificial intelligence, let's put it this way. So data science is overarching using all this, but in addition, they, as a data scientist, you can use other approaches, not just the artificial intelligence and machine learning in order to get insight from data because the main uh, purpose uh, of a data science uh, professional is to get insight for data. Not necessarily you need to use machine learning. Okay. The same way you have very structured data, you don't need to use that deep learning for, for uh, dealing with this data and building model and get inside. It's very important to keep all this, let's say, big picture. That is what I pretend to present here, the big picture. And uh, very quickly about uh, 650, what you are going to do, what you have been doing in the whole program is competence-based course uh, in which you will have as a graded assignment for project. And what we are going to grade is after you learn it, with what you learn it, what you can do. It's not just an exam which, with multiple choice question or question and answer is what you can do. So you are going to use different tool and apply what we have learned of the approaches of the big data. And of course, you will have uh, a lot of opportunity to learn uh, new stuff, a new software. So uh, in addition, like the whole program, we are talking about what we are doing in the class is with feedback from industry, from advisory board. I have summarized here some of the organization uh, constantly advising us. Uh, and this is, you understand, is very important because what you want is you spend time and money is to get a good paid job, right? Um, want to tell you, even the program is uh, relatively new. We're talking about six years old. This is very young problem. Actually, we have number of recognitions, some of them summarized here for the program, for student in competition, and we are very proud of all this. So for this course, uh, um, I'm extracted what is the schedule of the course, and here you will see the different assignment. Uh, mostly uh, each topic run between two and three weeks. Topics are so broad, we cannot cover uh, too much in one week. We start early in the week, we have discussion, and then we have something you will have to do practically with uh, um, analytical Hadoop, with Spark, the Spark uh, machine learning uh, with Python, 
text analytics and email analysis in using in memory uh, analytic uh, technology and culminating with what is cognitive analytic with uh, cognitive analytic application very specifically we are going to do a chatbot in this case and for each of the new to tools used for each of the project we're going to do a uh, live walkthrough um, our TA are going to help you to get, um, let's say, the learning curve faster. And then we, uh, you will have to read, come to the live walkthrough and overcome faster getting, let's say, this beginner or, uh, grasp of the tool so you are able to use it and to do, uh, uh, let's say, all are small projects of, of the duration, but all are very meaningful application here in the class. I want to share very proudly because all the students uh, passing through this class and all the classes in, in the program share some kind of, um, uh, let's say, not of their uh, experience at work. And I have received numerous times a note from a student, professor, uh, thanks to the project, whatever project, I'm not going to refer to any specific, thanks to this specific project, for instance, I, uh, I talked to my boss about this, and thanks to this, I was promoted to do something based on this project in my job. And this is very rewarding, and this is actually what we are looking for, that you can apply what you are doing here practically in the class in your future job. And if you are able to talk to your boss that you did this, maybe some, I'm not saying the same thing, but something which will trigger and give a aha moment to your boss that you can do something very meaningful and contribute to the company. And of course, you are going up to the ladder, getting better position in the company. So keep in mind, uh, of course, that doesn't substitute the syllabus. You have to go to the syllabus, overview, and see everything. What I want to point very quick is in the stage we are of big data, we pass all this uh, spreadsheet, uh, data warehouses, analytic uh, sandbox, and we are in the today, uh, let's say big data approach, uh, which is different of the traditional um, uh, data analytic and business analytic approach. To the left, I have what is the traditional one. Traditionally, business user start to determine, uh, start to uh, frame a problem, and then ask IT, IT to build a warring house, to build the, the infrastructure which is needed in order to uh, solve the problem you created. And of course, you have to wait between three and six months that they build the warring house, that, the, uh, that and the other. And that was for years, was the way we work it as a data analyst, data scientist with IT. Today, things have evolved. And not just because of the cloud, of course, the cloud is a big push in this direction. Today, the contemporary big data approach is you have an infrastructure, a platform, everything is deployed in the platform, all the tools you may need, and you as a data analyst, this is before starting, IT has deployed, it doesn't matter in on-premise, uh, in public cloud, in private cloud or on premise. It depends on the company or on three of them, which is actually the top today um, landscape. In all of them, in public, in private, and on premise. Most of the uh, company have uh, all the tools there and use as data analysts, data scientists. You will have to use them as you need. For instance, for this application, you need A, B, and C. Here they are. They are already deployed. They are part of the IT infrastructure. You don't have to ask IT to do anything for you. 
Okay, so this is the today um, uh, contemporary approach, and this is the approach we are going to use in this class. We are going to go to the cloud, and we are going to use the tool which are needed for the specific uh, for the specific project you are uh, doing. Uh, in general, software as a service and platform as a service very convenient. Um, since in the single class you cannot go, uh, we cannot uh, dis, uh, use many different, um, let's say for the same assignment, different tool, we mostly are going to work mostly, I'm saying not all, with IBM Cloud, but all the cloud, they are very similar, just the interface can be uh, a little different. Um, Azure, IBM Cloud, AWS, all they have mostly the same services, just named different with a little quite different um, interface. So we're going to use the IBM Cloud and the Watson Cognitive for the last part of the, um, of the um, course. So uh, the last bu bullet I have is named the Data Science Experience Cloud, which is named by IBM Watson Studio. They use this name for almost everything. But we are talking about a platform, which is the platform which data scientists need, which is with all the open source, Python notebook and uh, tutorial, which are um, shared by uh, data scientists. So is the, even though it's a IBM cloud, you will say, oh, everything is proprietary there. No. Most of the things are open source in the data science experience. Of course, the cognitive application, which you can use as a service, the Watson Cognitive, they are not open source. But uh, IBM is going too much today to what is open source. They are moving in this direction. And uh, although the Watson um, services were deployed without the contribution of the society, but they are moving to open source. Uh, why I'm uh, talking about this? Because things will be changing uh, from here to two years, what we are talking about, things will be changing. The same thing they changed from two years back. Uh, IBM bought Red Hat and they are going too much to what is multi-cloud, hybrid cloud and container. And everything, when you talk about application, you can, uh, with the open shift of um, Red Hat, and as application, when you deploy something as a data scientist, you can uh, develop everything in container and deploy in any cloud. That's why I'm saying it's not important in which cloud you are going to work because everything today is moving in this direction. Container and then deploy to any cloud. Okay, so um, I have several screenshots of the IBM cloud. Uh, Elena shortly is going to talk about the um, about the accounts we have to get as a student with no payment, no credit card, and using uh, very powerful resources uh, for um, for this class to do our project. Um, here, I, I just I talk about already the cognitive IBM Watson. So the last thing what we are going to do is what has evolved of this demonstration which IBM did uh, in Jeopardy where Watson won. After that, this 10 million computer in price, not in development, the, the, they spent too, a lot of uh, much more money to develop this. Then they, uh, IBM went to the next stage. They built a specific services which are very cost effective. You will see when you get to the cloud and you can, and they are based on what is IBM Watson. Uh, different services like uh, natural language understanding, personality insight, image recognition, uh, you name it. You will explore and you will use some of them. So the assignment, please review the syllabus. They are forum them. We're going to start with age base. 
uh, for Hadoop, uh, uh, part of the Hadoop ecosystem. Then uh, week three, we are moving to the to Spark, uh, SQL and machine learning. Then in the second part of the course, we are going to use sentiment, uh, sentiment analysis uh, using um, a new technology, which is in memory analytic. And you are going to use um, the embedded R in the cloud, no, not R in your um, personal computer. And at the end, we are go you are going to be build a chatbot using Batsum Cognitive Services. So uh, going forward, I would like to give the word to Ozan to talk a little bit about the grading. Ozan. Professor, thank you very much. Um, uh, I would just remind very couple basic uh, points to all, all of our folks. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say that please uh, don't leave your assignment to last day or last you know days of the week. Please uh, you know work on during the week time. Uh, start before one week or two week. Make sure that you are reaching out to your TA, you are reaching out to your instructor, and make sure that you understand the assignment descriptions very well. We have very important points in the assignment descriptions, like the format, or the, the which kind of file you are going to upload. You know, are we doing uh, asking for screenshot or are we asking for the code only? So please read all these details. Make sure that you don't miss any any of these details. If you need any extension for, for any personal reasons, please reach out to your instructor before the submission date. Not after the submission date, please. Before the submission date, with a valid reason, I can give one day, maybe two day extension, but please give us a very, very valid reason and do this before the submission date. Announcements are very important. Uh, in the announcements, we give a lot of hints about the assignment descriptions about the following week. For example, there are rules, uh, which uh, you know Yelena will explain more about this IBM uh, accounts. We will be giving more details in the announcements, so please uh, read your announcements very well, very well. Also, Professor has said, uh, definitely, these are 15 to 20 works, 20 hours of work per week uh, course. Please make sure that you dedicate this amount of work so that you can understand and uh, submit the best assignments uh, to get very good grades and also to understand the concepts. Discussion boards, discussion boards uh, are also being graded, so please, start participating discussion board uh, early of the uh, assignment not at the last days of the grading uh, last days of the discussion board please read and participate uh, as much as you can that's all i have professor excellent um so actually everything which is here in this second slide uh, i'm uh, I'm sorry, um, you already went through this. So uh, maybe Elena can go and talk about. Um... Sure. Uh, so basically, this is just the general guide. Uh, some of you might be repeating this course for numerous reasons, but it does not matter. But what matters is that please, please always download the latest copy of the assignment because you cannot assume that what, what was there last semester is exactly the same now. Because like, for example, a BM Cloud account is an example, right? We're using a slightly different approach this time because, well, you're going to need eventually, you're going to need to obtain the code because your account has to be an academic account. It should have a certain status to do assignments three and four, right? But what's happening is that you don't need to apply that code to do assignment two. Well, ideally, I would, we would have asked you to uh, create an IBM Cloud account, obtain and apply, and apply the code, right? When the class starts, 
you do it in the first week of class. This time, we are not asking you to obtain the code now because the way IBM is they give the code uh, through end of June, regardless of when you get it. Then uh, at some point in the middle of June, they're going to have the code that is valid through December. So what you're going to do right now, right now, by the end of the week, you just create an account and submit a screenshot. Your account status is going to be light, right? It means it's not an academic account, but you're good for the next assignment, which is which you're going to start working on in week three. Now, pay close attention to announcements. At some point in June, you're going to get instructions. You'll need to obtain long code. I believe it's 14 digits long code. And you will have to add it to your account. Because if you don't do that, you won't be able to use the service that we're going to use for assignment three. All right? So that's basically the highlight because I received email from a couple of people. Uh, well, if you took this class last semester, if your account has a code applied already, well, that's fine. But you will still need to apply in the new code. When you will, you, you will, you will see an announcement when, okay? But you will need to do that. Now, if you happen to access your account and you're prompted for credit card, Please, please, please do yourself a favor. Do not enter that credit card. Instead, you need to contact the TA. And we're going to do the screen sharing session with you and we'll show you how to resolve it. All right? So promise me, promise everybody else on this call that you're not going to enter the credit card. Um, well, I know sometimes I sound like a broken record, but sometimes I like, I like to tell people proactively what not to do rather than doing it reactively. You see what I'm saying? So. It, it's very important, all right? Thank you, Elena. Sure. Uh, Linish, can you uh, talk a little bit uh, about Kaggle competition? Sure. So we have a Kaggle, as I mentioned earlier, um, everyone, the Kaggle competition um, will be kind of hosting this competition for this class and semester. Um, and you will you will get all the instructions. You would get an overview video about the about the Kaggle competition. It's a very simple competition, guys. Um, if you are familiar with the with the Kaggle platform, um, you are already one step ahead, right? And if you're not, um, this is a very good opportunity to get to know the platform, um, which is a world class platform and you know, used by you know folks in academia and students and then and data science practitioners and so on and researchers, even for hiring purposes. Um, it, it's good to kind of just uh, get some familiarity with the, with the Kaggle platform. So if you ever get a chance in the next two weeks or so, you know, just, just log on to um, or, or just go to this website, kaggle.com, K-A-G-G-L-E.com. And, um, you know, just get, just get yourself familiarized with the, with the uh, website. Uh, which is going to be a very similar website uh, for your class. Um, but as I said, it's, it's a very simple competition. Um, just by you know, entering into the competition, trying out, um, working on, on a simple you know, data set and a model, um, you, could, you could get you know, a maximum of you know, three points for you know, being, being the top in, in this competition. So um, you know, I would highly encourage you all um, to enter and, and participate in this competition, which is going to be exclusively, uh, as I said, for this class and semester. So you would not have too many competitors. You would not have people from outside. Um, this is exclusively for you. And, and you'll find lots of uh, information in the overview video. You will also see another you know, video that would be set out, a very short one again, just to show you a very de uh, a small demo code. Um, which you can, you know, just just for understanding how to, you know, um, build a solution uh, for the problem. Okay, um, so looking forward to, you know, your participation in this competition soon. Thank you, Linish. Uh, so I don't want to continue uh, uh, saying how and to stress how important it is that you uh, preemptively uh, read the lesson don't wait until the last moment this course actually is no way you can um, successfully finish 
and complete a project if you don't start from day one, really. And is intense course, like most of the courses, and I would say uh, in the program, this is even more. And uh, make sure that you, uh, Leo has a lot of uh, alert you can set up. So make sure you set up alert, something new happen in the classroom, you know, you know. You can set up alert so you know when your grade is posted. You can set up alert, you know where a new announcement is there. You can set an alert, somebody responded to your um, posting in the classroom. So make sure that you know what is happening in the classroom. There is a lot of information to read and schedule the time. I understand we are living in more difficult time right now. Many of you have to deal with kids at home. Uh, still not everyone is at work and it's very stressful. We understand that. And of course, don't hesitate to contact your professor if you have difficulty of any kind. Just I want to stress that not because we, the instructor for this class, don't want to accommodate um, any difficulty you are overcoming. We understand this, this is human. Just keep in mind that on the other hand, anyway, you will have to complete the project in order to complete the course. So if you miss more than a couple of days, it's really, really very difficult to catch up. I want to stress to this. So if you have question, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to ask question. You can unmute yourself or put your question in the in the chat. I see one question in the chat. I will start uh, answering uh, what I see in the uh, in the chat and uh, um, Ozan, uh, Linish, Elena, don't hesitate if you see something to yeah. jump in. Yeah, I was so, sent you a private message about it, I know, I know. <laughs> because we don't need to. I know. Stole anything, yeah. Okay, I will talk about this. Yes. So, Jean Anderson is asking if we have a week of two in the semester where we know our job are going to be crazy. Can we work ahead on the course work to avoid asking for extension? Surely you can work. Now, uh, only I want to tell you, of course you can work. Let me go to the previous slide. Okay, these are the project. Okay, and they are assigned. If, uh, for instance, you finish, you can move. Uh, we are not opening uh, many things on beforehand, but for instance, when week three start, we have opened everything until week six because everything is related. So you can read and the only thing we have a tutorial which you have to finish, for instance, let me go to this slide here. For instance, for Spark, you will have to finish, uh, submit this tutorial, then the assignment, the big project, which is the Spark Machine Learning, will open for you. This is the way the course is set up. It's a conditional assignment. It doesn't depend on me as a professor. This is instructionally uh, designed this way. So you first have to do the tutorial, which is just five points, and then the next, the big assignment, which is 15 point of the final grade will open for you. So there is no problem, of course, and make sure you contact the instructor and whatever is needed will be worked out. Just you will have to follow the, the sequence. I guess I responded to you. Before continuing to answer another question, which actually I don't see, I want to stress something. For this class, you do not need to install anything such as Hadoop, HBase, everything is in the cloud. Although you will find reading in which the reading is uh, related with technology and talks about 
installing, but these are reading. They are not instruction for the project we are doing in this class. So I heavily want to stress, there is not such a thing as installing Hadoop or Nagebase in your computer. Although some of the reading talk about this, but these are reading, no instruction for the assignment. Everything is in the cloud for our class. Um, so, Jin is satisfied with the question, no problem. Anybody else? You all, if you don't want to write in the chat, you can unmute yourself and talk also. I'm not sure user can unmute uh, themselves, right, uh, Elena? You can. I'm yeah. able to unmute myself. Yeah, now. everyone is in with the same yeah, position. So yeah, if you software want to resources? talk. Software Yeah, software resources will be provided. What yeah. resources? Yes. No, the question is about the software resources. Yeah, each week there are readings, and there will be step by step, not for the first assignment because it's not a hands-on, but. For the uh, Spark, yeah, they will be step by step. Oh, all resources are, Andrew, all the resources are in the classroom and whatever you need, you can print out. They are in a, you know, in the classroom and if you want, if they are for Hadoop, for Watson, for Spark, there is plenty of resources. And also the books, the, 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 the e-books. Uh, let me see if I can go in the meantime. Uh, I will appreciate, Elena, you take care about answering questions. I'm going to go to the classroom and share yeah. and show how many resources we because have. I will stop yeah. sharing this. And uh, each week you're going to see, um, if you go to the content, right, each bi week or tri week, you're going to see it says, um, required readings right and then it's going to be also recommended readings and also there might be a session that some readings that will help you with assignments there could be some technical videos or and in addition to that once in a while i'll be doing the, or me or Linesh will be doing the sessions where we do a little demo and after that you're going to get a copy of whatever we did the recording plus any files we used any code or anything like that all right. So yes, yeah, there'll be plenty of resources. Well, we did not post everything at once because the updates to IBM Cloud are ongoing. So if, if for example, if I post uh, the resources on how to create a chatbot right now, well, there is a high chance that they might do an update by the time we get to it at the end of the semester. Yeah. Things will be posted as you, yeah, as we get going. The question is, what is the cutoff score for an A grade? 90% is an A, right? You all yes, know 90% yes. is an A, yes. But I mean, it's like, it's nothing different in every class to get an A, you go a little bit above beyond, right? If you meet the requirement, it's a B. B mm -hmm. means you met the requirement. There could be some small errors here and there, but to get an A, you have to go beyond. It's nothing different. It's all spelled out in the syllabus. So, Look, there is a, in the syllabus, you're going to see the section on uh, grading, and I believe it's the same in every course in a program. Right, Yelena? Yes. yes. So B is means basic requirements are met, it's a graduate benchmark. There might be some minor errors here and there, but for the most part, you satisfy the requirements. A is more in depth. Like, for example, if I was doing a paper, I would probably cite the readings, not copy paste, but I would probably cite according to such and such. So you're basically showing the teachers that you've read what was posted and that you know how to apply. Well, that's what I would do, but, you know, depth of analysis. Did I answer the question? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, I see Derek. Derek is asking about um, uh, sample code. Yeah. Well, well sample yeah. code actually, uh, that's are the tutorials, and you will have to tweak it very easily. And mostly, uh, mostly you can you can use uh, a lot of uh, 
That is the beauty of the data science experience Watson Studio, where you have all this notebook shared. You can, is full of no, notebook. Um, I'm not logged to show you, but when you go there, you will see uh, all these notebook are shared. So you can get a Python code is right there. That is the beauty of open source. And that is the way we are going to work in this class with the Python notebook in the Watson Studio, where you have a code for any application you may wish. Okay, not a problem. Elena, Elena, they are uh, very similar. Let me see that oh, yeah. I lost the button of sharing. Oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, those two names are similar. So it, it depends on how it was um, transmitted, so to speak. Okay, do you see yeah. now the classroom? Mm -hmm. Classroom, just this is my view. Of course, they are more stuff than you. Let me put myself as a student. So what I'm going to show is what actually you see. And so we talk, this is uh, 9041. And uh, you will see, uh, for instance, you see only week one and two. The other are not open. Uh, <coughs> we can open more week if, if needed. But look how many resources we have in week one. This is the course content. We have three lectures, and under each lecture, you have all these are reading PDF file, uh, chapter one, two, and three uh, PDF file. All these are PDF. And of course, you can, whichever of these PDF, you can print, you can download to your computer for MapReduce also. For each of the topic, we have at least two reading and some additional reading uh, the way you see. So what is mandatory and then additional, which you will master better uh, uh, if you do also the recommended reading. Moreover, in the classroom, you can go to something which is named content resources, and you can find a lot of content resources here. You have 32 ebook e in, so you can download whatever you wish from here, okay? If you read all this, you will be all. Uh, it requires a lot of time, but you are free to download or you, four months after the course finish, you still can come here and access the resources in the classroom. So, uh, plenty of resources, as I mentioned. Let me see what happened with the, uh, with the chat, uh, with the chat. Any question in the chat? I love the chat. I don't see any, Yelena. No? Mm -mm. Okay, let me stop sharing. Oh. Here it is. Oh, uh, and you guys saw that little search text box. Sometimes if you're not sure where something is located in the classroom, you may type the, your keywords in there and run a search and it will find all locations in the content where the topic is. You saw that little search text box. This yes. is not, yes, yeah, this is not in the training. This is not in Leo training. I'm just telling you. Okay. Okay. And then also you can bookmark pages that you like. So if you access something very often, you can just create a bookmark. Much easier, it, you click on it, it takes you to the location in the classroom. Okay, okay any other question? No? I don't see in the in the chat question in writing. Anybody, if you wish, you can unmute yourself and talk. Okay, this week, this first week, we are going to uh, 
meet each other. Many of you, since this is almost at the end of the program, I know already know your, uh, your classmate from other courses. Not all of them, of course, but uh, I think most of you at least know half of the people in the classroom already working with them. My um, goal is to know each other. And of course, during the course, we are going to continue uh, knowing each other through the discussion, through your question, through your contribution to the discussion. And let me say, uh, tell you, um, the discussion are very important part of the course. Why? Because this is the part where you can share what your understanding with your colleague and your colleague can contribute to the topic this is not answering question like whatever guiding bullet point you see there, they are just to guide the discussion in the topic of the week or the topic of the two weeks. Take them not as a question, as a guiding point and try to contribute and make the discussion something from which you will express idea, you will be corrected if something is not uh, okay there. Nothing wrong with this. That is the purpose of the discussion. Don't be afraid that you are going to say something which is uh, not totally correct. Hmm? This is part in which you will, we will learn to the, uh, together and you will be corrected. So your understanding is enhanced through the discussions. No more questions. If there is no more question, I think we're going to finish the today's section. I hope it was useful for you. And I look forward for excellent and rewarding semester. And of course, wishing everybody uh, stay safe and we will get through this somehow. Stay safe, that is very important. We will get through this. And uh, I would say it's very important you do the, in this difficult situation, you continue studying and devoting resources toward your education. It's very important. That is the best thing you can do. Wishing everyone wonderful evening and finishing the recording.